Bhagavatam Grantaraja Ki Jai Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Janmada se yato yato neviad itaratas cha te sua vigya swarat Tene brahma yudaya adikavaye muyanti at surayaha Tejo radimadam yata vinimayo yatra tri sargo misha Dam nasvena sada nirasta kuha kam satyam param dimahi. Dam nasvena sada nirasta kuha kam satyam param dimahi. O my Lord Sri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. O my Lord Sri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. O all pervading personality of Godhead. O all pervading personality of Godhead. From my respectful obeisances unto you. From my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. I meditate. And the primeval cause of all causes. And the primeval cause of all causes. Uh, the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. Of creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he's independent because there's no other cause behind him. And he's independent because there's no other cause behind him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen in fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes. Temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature. Temporarily manifested by the reaction of the three modes of nature. Appear factual, although they are unreal. Appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode. Which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Projita Kaitra Vodra. Dharma Projita Kaitra Vodra. Paramo Nirmatsaranam Satam. Paramo Nirmatsaranam Satam. Vedyam Vastavam Atra Vastu. Vedyam Vastavam Atra Vastu. Shivadam Tapa Trayon Mulabha. Shivadam Tapo Trayon Mulabha. Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite. Kimva Prayer Ishwaraha Sadyo Hudi Avurudyate Tra Sadyo Hudi Avurudyate Tra Kriti Behi Susu Subistakshanat Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavad Purana propounds the highest truth. This Bhagavad Purana propounds the highest truth. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity is sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam, by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpaturur galitam falam. Sukamakad amrita dravya samyutam. Pipata Bhagavatam rasam alayam. Mohur ahoraska bhuvi bhavu kaha. O expert and thoughtful man, relish Shrimad Bhagavatam. 
the mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadeva Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Even though its nectarian juice was already relishable for all, including liberated souls. Chinvatam Swatata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Idiyam Taksto Bhadrani Vidunati Srihit Satam to hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita is it is itself righteous activity and for one who hears about Krishna Lord Krishna who is dwelling in everyone's heart acts as a best wishing friend and purifies a devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Nasta presu bhadresu nityam bhagavata sevaya bhagavati uttama sloke bhaktir bhavati naistaki In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. Dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhavo kamalo bhadayas chaye chetetaranavidam stitvam sattve prasiddhati by development of devotional service of the Lord, I'm sorry, by development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus, material lust and avarice are diminished. Are diminished. Evam prasana manaso. Bhagavat Bhakti Yogataha Bhagavat Tattva Vigyanam Mukta Sangha Sijayate When these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness, becomes enlivened by devotional service, and understands the science of God Perfectly. Pidyate hridaya grantis chidyante sarvasam saya shiyante chasya karmani just evat manishwari. Thus, bhakti yoga severs the hard knot of material affection and enables one to come to the stage of a samsayam samagram. Okay, uh, enables one to come at once to the stage of some Sam Samagram. Understanding the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, and we'll read the text 35 and 36. The original personality Godhead, I'm sorry, Mangalya Cha Lukanam, Shemaya Cha Bhavaya Cha, Aste Yadu Kulam Bodav, Adyo Nanta Sakapumam. Yad bahu danda guptayam Swapurnyam yadavo richita Kridanti paramanandam 
Maha Purushika Iva. Translation by Srila Prabhupada. The original personality of Godhead, the enjoyer, and Balaram, the primeval Lord Ananta, are staying in the ocean of the Yadu dynasty for the welfare, protection, and general progress of the entire universe. And the members of the Yadu dynasty, being protected by the arms of the Lord, are enjoying life like the residents of the spiritual sky. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. As we have discussed many times, the personality of Godhead, Vishnu, resides within every and uh, within each and every universe in two capacities, namely as the Garbhadaksha Vishnu and the Shirodaksha Vishnu. The Shirodaksha Vishnu has his own planet on the northern top of the universe, and there is a great ocean of milk where the Lord resides on the bed of the Ananta. Incarnation of Baladeva. Thus, Maharaj Yudhisthira has compared the Yadu dynasty to the ocean of milk and Sri Balarama to the Ananta, where Lord Krishna resides. He has compared the citizens of Dwarka to the liberated inhabitants of the Vaikuntha Lokas. Beyond the material sky, further than we can see with our eyes, and beyond the sevenfold coverings of the universe, there is the causal ocean in which all the universes are floating like footballs. And beyond the causal ocean, there is an unlimited span of spiritual sky generally known as the effulgence of Brahman. Within this effulgence, there are innumerable spiritual planets, and they are known as the Vaikuntha planets. Each and every Vaikuntha planet is many, many times bigger than the biggest universe within the material world, and each of them, and in each of them, there are innumerable inhabitants who look exactly like Lord Vishnu. These inhabitants are known as the Mahapurushikas, or persons directly engaged in the service of the Lord. They are happy in those planets and are without any kind of misery, and they live perpetually in full usefulness, enjoying life, in full bliss and knowledge, without fear of birth, death, old age, or disease, and without the influence of Kala, eternal time. Maharaj Yudhisthira has compared the inhabitants of Dwarka to the Mahapurushikas of Vaikuntha Loka because they are so happy with the Lord. In the Bhagavad Gita, there are many references to the Vaikuntha Lokas, and they are mentioned there as Mad Dhamma or the kingdom of the Lord. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. In order to hear real descriptions of the spiritual world, one must come to the Srimad Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. Nowhere else in no other scripture are there such detailed explanations of the spiritual world. Now, there are also examples of the spiritual world in the material world, especially when the Lord descends to uh, enact his transcendental pastimes. So he brings with him all his associates, and they engage together with the Lord in his transcendental pastime in, in the material world. So it is possible to attain a life that is without misery without tribulations and, and uh, living happily and peacefully. So these Mahapurushikas uh, of Vaikuntha uh, are compared uh, to the inhabitants of Dwarka uh, when Krishna was present there because they are so happy with the Lord. And we get a taste of that in the temple when, when we see the deities very nicely decorated and shining and beautiful and nice kirtan going on and uh, classes and prasadam and so forth, we become happy. And we also experience this type of transcendental life. Uh, 
In other words, Vaikuntha, a place where there's no uh, kunta or misery and anxiety. That's why people say, well, I come to the temple because I, I feel peace. Well, that's if the atmosphere of the temple is uh, spiritually saturated with devotion for the Lord. There, there's definitely going to be peace. There's going to be tranquility. There's going to be uh, affection for the Lord demonstrated by the service and the kirtans and so forth. And that's important because uh, that atmosphere of cooperative devotional service is what is the hallmark of the spiritual world. Everyone's cooperating in the spiritual world to please Krishna. In the material world, everyone is arguing and fighting because they all have selfish interests. They cannot be really uh, on the same page of uh, benevolent and self-controlled activity based on devotion to the Lord. <clears throat> so we see the politicians, they're all fighting. They all have different points of view and there's very little chance that they can harmonize their points of view. And that is example of the material world. Uh, it's just like if you have concentric circles around the same focal point, there's no intersection. But if you have uh, circles around focal points that are different, then there's going to be intersections, and those intersections are going to result in conflict. Two people wanting the same thing at the same time for different reasons. So you have conflict. And uh, Prabhupada said that Kali Yuga gets so bad, so bad, that every house will have its own flag, its own currency, its own laws, its own army, every house, right? Not every country. Uh, because of this uh, refusal to cooperate uh, to serve the Lord. They, people want to serve themselves. Eventually, every house becomes a separate country with its own tax, law, tax laws, etc. So we see that. Uh, Prabhupada says the number of flags in the United Nations is always increasing instead of decreasing. That means people keep breaking away, just like there was Yugoslavia and broke into three or four different countries. And there was Czechoslovakia broke into two countries. And there is uh, Bharat it broke into many, many different countries. There was India uh, under the British, and then it broke up into Pakistan, India, and Bangladesh. And now there's more agitation and break off uh, the uh, Punjab from India, Assam from India, and so forth. So we see as time goes on, even the United States, uh, before it was 13 colonies, now it's 50 plus colonies, uh, not colonies, but states. And then uh, there are states now that want to uh, bifurcate, like California, parts of California want to be part, have their own state independent of the large state of California, and then parts of uh, uh, West uh, Eastern Oregon want to join Idaho, and so forth. And California maybe one day will want to secede from the United States and have its own country. So we see this this downward spiral of arguing and uh, lusty behavior and so forth. That's Kali Yuga. But the spiritual world is full of cooperation. Everyone wants to cooperate because they all have the same goal, to please Krishna. So whether you please Krishna, I'm happy, or whether I please Krishna, you're happy because we have the same goal, to please Krishna. Uh, there's no envy. Uh, it's not like you know the corporate, corporate uh, culture in which people are trying to undermine each other in order to get ahead. In other words, they're kicking someone down for them to go up. Whereas Prabhupada says, Krishna consciousness is, pro is the process of kicking everyone up. In the material world, the process is kicking people down in order to go up uh, due to one's selfish interest. So uh, there's, a real in there's a real necessity for 
people to understand what is Vaikuntha, what is the spiritual world. And through Krishna consciousness, one can have the same thing even in the material world. It just depends on being guided by bona fide uh, spiritual masters who have to be bona fide. They themselves should not have uh, lusty and uh, avaricious uh, characters. They have to be free of those things. Lust, anger, and greed, and uh, madness, illusion, and envy. Those things destroy one. The goodness a person may have brings them down to the modes of passion and ignorance, and there's only uh, deterioration and destruction in that in that in that uh, influence under that influence. So it says here that uh, a Vaikuntha planet is bigger. Each and every Vaikuntha planet is many times bigger than the biggest universe within the material world. Just imagine that. That one Vaikuntha planet is bigger than the biggest universe in the material world. And in each of them, there are innumerable inhabitants who look exactly like Lord Vishnu. So, if we can meditate a little bit uh, on this, on these points, you see what a what a tremendous difference there is between the material world and the spiritual world. Then we understand why would anyone want to live in a material world where there's constant anxiety and there's constant tragedy. It's so like yesterday. There's a huge. Uh, it looked like an atomic bomb explosion in in downtown or in Beirut and uh, many many people have died and, and there's thousands of people injured and many apartment buildings and factories and, and shops are, are destroyed all happen in a matter of uh, minutes and how would this, such a huge explosion take place well that's they're trying to figure it out right now, but uh, they say that there was a a uh, uh, store storage facility that had tons and tons of explosive material in it. It caught on fire, and the whole thing blew up. Now, if that's true, it seems far-fetched, but if it's true, uh, it's extreme irresponsibility that's caused untold misery to the people of this city called Beirut. I used to live in Beirut. I know what it's like there. And uh, it's this thing is like an unbelievable catastrophe. No one could expect that something like that could happen. But there are explanations because, uh, anyway, we won't go into it. But you see, that's the material world. At any time, everything can be uprooted, uh, just like... Uh, the Indians that were living in Uganda, when Idi Amin took over, he gave them 24 hours to leave, and you could only take what you could carry. And also, what you could carry was inspected uh, and uh, to make sure that you were not taking gold and jewelry and things like that. <laughs> and after living there for hundreds of years, uh, the very affluent Indian community was wiped out in 24 hours, and all their lands were confiscated, and all the, you know, the, the cemeteries and whatever they had, they were all destroyed. See? So that's the nature of the material world. There's, there's no, no predicting what can happen here. Therefore, uh, but yes, we can predict. Everything is going to go through six stages: birth, growth, staying giving off byproducts, dwindling, and death. So that's the nature of the material world. Uh, and during that period of six, let's say, transitions, if we waste our time eating, sleeping, mating, defending like animals, then uh, we have rude awakening at the moment of death that we don't know what's going to happen to us. And most likely we have to take birth again in different species and continue suffering in the material world. 
So therefore, we should use every moment of our life to cultivate Krishna consciousness, to help others become Krishna conscious, and to disseminate this knowledge, uh, which is the only true knowledge of uh, the material world, the spiritual world, of Krishna, of the living entities, and what our actual duty is in life, Hare Krishna. So are there any questions? Hare Mo. Okay. All glories to Prabhupada. Yeah. <clears throat>